good timing. How important was that one for you guys? Yeah, well, every two points is valuable in um, such a tight competition and um, we, we learnt that last year. But our response was really important on the back of a bad performance last week and we responded in the best way possible. Um, I feel like we were a bit nervous at the start and, you know, our details off and put ourselves under a bit of pressure, but we had plenty of fight and courage, which was great. You sure did. It was a good win. Now, you've had three wins, three losses, six games. How have you judged your start to the season? Uh, there's been lots of good in what we've done, but there's been lots of bad in what we've done too. So we've got to narrow that gap. Um, you know, two of our performances were, were pretty poor. Um, you know, in particular, the, the West Tigers one where we got frustrated. Um, and a lot of players, the effort that was there in the West Tigers game, but we tried to look for a soft win. But we also, a lot of players trying to do things on their own instead of sticking to their jobs. And often that happens, you know, when you lose a key playmaker, everyone wants to stand up and, you know, go above their job, but we just need everyone to do their job to the best of their ability. Brad, just on the, the loss of Mitch Moses, you, you, you've swapped and changed a little bit in the number seven jersey. How hard is it to find a guy that can come in and manage a game like that? Obviously, he's a quality player, but it seems like there's not a lot of, you know, true halves being developed these days in the game. Yeah, well, it's taken um, Mitchell a long time to get where he's at at the moment. And, you know, look, we miss his energy. Um, his talk is probably the biggest thing for, for controlling halves is they really take control of the team, keep everyone calm, um, let everyone know what their, their job is. You know, little things like Mitchell and the, we're getting the tackle for in defence, you know, and he's making sure that everyone's nice and clean in the ruck so we're giving away no penalties. Um, you know, DJ... Stepped up the other night and he was a bit nervous at the start. Um, he probably should have been there a couple of weeks ago, but he wasn't on top of a, a few effort areas in reserve grade and we can't reward that and because then we reward that and we start accepting it for the team. So um, he worked hard in cup, got himself an opportunity the other night and he, he iced the game for us at the back end of the game. Hey, Brad, I'm at Scorty here. Just on Mitch, how is he tracking and when do you expect him back? Um, he has an X-ray next week, and it, it hopefully he'll be out of the boot soon, and maybe start some um, deload running, and, and then from there. So they're, they're saying that he's tracking pretty good and, and, and working around the eight to ten week mark. But Noel Mitchell, he's already saying he'll be right after eight weeks. So uh, maybe another four or five games, and we should have him back. Oh, Brad, it's uh, Phil Rothfield. Um, Zach Lomax, great signing uh, for next year. Um, what's he going to bring to your footy club? I presume he'll play centre where he wants to. Um, yeah, how do you see that, what he's going to do for your side next year? Yeah, well, look, it's imminent and the club's hopeful of announcing something uh, in the next couple of days. But, look, Zach's athletic. Um, he's fast. He's a bit different to what we've got in the outside backs. You know, he's a, he's a kick target. He, he competes hard. He's nice and aggressive. Um, and, you know, whether he... Um, you know, what side of the field, we don't know, and we'll worry about that next year. But playing in the centre, I feel like, you know, he, he, he can be nice and strong out of the backfield for us. But I think that he's, he's got a good ability to set people up on the outside of him as well as, um, you know, the try scoring ability he has himself. Yeah, Brad, there was talk there might be a swap and he could come this year. Is that a, is that a chance of happening later in the year, next few weeks? Have you got anyone oh, you'd send to Flano and replace? Yeah, look, I'm not sure I've left that with, with Mark and our recruitment guys to, to sort out. Um, but at the moment, you know, we're, we're worried about the team that we're putting out this week. We've got a, we've got a tough game and we need to back up some week-to-week um, -week performances. One of the things you've been doing, Brad, uh, or talking about in recent times is trying to find that X factor. We saw that last year with uh, a little bit of talk with you, Clint Gutherson offering the, the change positions, if you could accommodate that. I, I see a bloke like Blaise Salangi and think he's, a, he's an X factor player. Has, has there been a... a, a like a thought there to try and promote him and, and start him each week just to bring that X factor to, the, to your team? Yeah, well, Blaze is um, a young kid. He, he does have that real ability of the ball to find space. Um, and he's still learning the game. He, he handled it physically the first three games for us. And, um, you know, we just got to get some, on top of some detail. Um, but... You know, we're going to use him off the bench this week and, you know, maybe see, you know, he can cover a few different spots for us and um, when he gets fast, we might put him on through the middle. But, yeah, we're, um, we're going to experiment a few things with him because he does bring, provide plenty of um, X factor for us.
But hey, Dylan Brown, uh, I'm a big fan of his. I, I think he's got so much potential and he's shown brilliance over the past few seasons. But he's been a little bit critical of himself, especially with Mitch being out. As his coach, what do you want to see out of Dylan week in and week out, especially now without his chief playmaker by his side? Yeah, I think he's been unfair on himself. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I think he's been one of our best. He's, he's stepped up with his kicking game and all bar one kick per game in the last three where he's come up with a seven tackle set, he's kicked really well. So when Mitchell comes back, we need him to continue to do that. And usually Mitchell might have 15 kicks and Dylan have two in a game. So if we can get an even split there, it'll, it'll make it harder for the, the opposition's back three. Um, we still want him to continue to run because that's his biggest threat. You know, it's up to the team to help with the, the game management part of it. Like, Dylan can't control blokes turning the ball over on tackle one from a penalty tap, you know. So, like, that's not his responsibility. We keep it pretty simple with what, the way we like to play. And, you know, we've got that power um, athlete in our team where we like to play that power game with a selective offload. And that, that suits Dylan. Um, so, it's, it's really up to the rest of the guys to step up and name their roles around him because I think he's done a great job. And the last thing we want to do is, you know, it's taken us a long time to get him to run every time possible. We don't want him to stop running right now. Parramatta is one of the big clubs, Brad. Uh, there's always talk around the club. There's always a lot of very impatient fans too waiting for that premiership to come along. How are you handling that? Because there has been just a little bit of scuttlebutt around. There's always a little bit of noise around about Parramatta. How are you handling that this year and, and how do you quieten that? Oh, the only way to quieten is with performances and we need to be more consistent. Um, but I've, I've got the confidence and the trust in the club that I'd be the first to know if there was any issues. Um, but as a team, we just need to focus on, on week-to-week footy and that's our, our issue at the moment is we've got to back it up, you know, every single game. Um, but as a club, I think we've done a good job of improving every player that comes to our, our team. We improve them as people. Um, yes, we, we're chasing that ultimate success of a, a grand final win. So we're no different to the other club and it's, it's tough to do and we're going to be, you know, we're going to be doing as much as we can about it. How hard is it when you sort of, you, you nearly get to the top of the mountain a couple of years ago and then you've got to go back, you've got to rebuild, you've got to reset your roster. How difficult is that when you've got so close to try and just you know, keep it there without having to have, go through the whole rebuild again? Yeah, look, it's... That's part of coaching. It's tough. It's, you know, when you improve players, they deserve more money, want more money, and it's hard to keep everyone. It's just that's what the salary cap's designed to do to try and even the competition out. Um, you know, but we've got the guys that we've got this year are all signed for next year, so we've got a bit of stability yeah. back again. Um, and I think that we've showed that when we play our best footy, we can beat any team in the competition. And, you know, the thing that concerns me is at times our biggest threat is, it, is ourselves, you know. Sometimes we self-destruct and, and beat ourselves. Good on you, BA. Good luck for the rest of the year. Good luck against the Dolphins in Darwin. No doubt plenty of water bottles in the coaching box this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, boys. <laughs> he loves the water bottles in Darwin, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. You noticed that the last few years? Yeah.